Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Dwarf Fortress. Going to be doing a little bit of a short fort today, starting fresh, creating a new world even. And I'm not going for anything special, really. We're just going to load up a plain old world and see what happens. The Destined Universe. Perfect. And now we'll start playing Fortress Mode. And this is when the tricky part kicks in, because today I would like to make a fortress in a, uh, well, I want to play with water today. I really like the water stuff in Dwarf Fortress, and I haven't done it in a while, so that's what we're doing. But I gotta find just the perfect spot. It will take a little bit of looking around, I think. Just a moment. Okay, this over here looks pretty darn good, I'd say. Just going over it really quick, it looks like we have a brook or a stream or something that's coming down through the mountains. Hitting tab a couple times, you can see the, uh, the height of the surrounding area is pretty uh, extreme. So yeah, that's what we're gonna go with. Gonna prepare for the journey carefully, of course. Got to very careful and we'll get rid of like all of our items because i'm not careful at all except for an anvil some picks and some battle axes in fact i'm gonna take some more picks and some more axes too in our anvil because that's kind of a pain to get more of and aside from that we got to pick some animals so i'm just gonna pick a random one and that's gonna be our chosen animal cavies the literal most useless animal excellent all right, caveat up, that's fine. We'll bring some stone too. Not necessary at all, but it'll get us started quicker. Maybe, there we go. And our dwarves, I'm gonna make them all miners and engravers. Oh, except for you, ran out of points. Yeah, we'll find something for you. Now our fortress name will be Arel Kun, water master. Our group name will be Kun Arel, the master of water. And our symbol will be a wave and a dwarf. The dwarf is fighting with a wave. Excellent. And yeah, I think that's going to just about do it. Let's go embark. Okay, here we are. And I can tell already this is not what I expected it to be. Going to zoom out. Uh-huh. It looks like this brook here just kind of goes around this mountainy area in the west. And if we go up, the mountains do rise up quite a bit. But yeah, that stream has nothing to do with them. That's going to make our ideas uh, a little difficult to implement, I believe. Now, as for the ideas, what I want to do is collect a bunch of water in like a reservoir. Not something I've done for a while. I dearly love messing around with water in Dwarf Fortress. And any source of water, even a piddly one like this that's not in an optimal location, can be used to great effect against goblins. And thankfully, we do have some goblin neighbors who I'm sure will be visiting before long. Now, the first thing I want to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to carve out a little temporary fortress. This is on a tutorial, but I frequently hear from people that they can't handle all their migrants and stuff. They don't need a fancy place to start. This is going to be fine right here. Those little nooks on the sides there, bedrooms. That space at the end, meeting hall. It's temporary. That's fine. They'll be happy enough. Now, as for this brook here, probably going to have to divert the thing up the hill over here to the west. That's going to be a pain, but you got to do what you got to do. Let's get to it, dwarves. Oh, actually, going to have to find some food real quick. Our miners are out on the hillside gathering plants currently. There's plenty around here, so bringing no food is not going to hurt us. And what we don't eat will be brewed into drinks. Easy enough. Back up in the north here, you can see we've already dug out a trench for the water. There's just no water going through it quite yet. The water is going to run down here into the mountainside, and then hopefully we could set up some screw pumps right here, which will drag that water up, up, up to here, where it will then be dumped out the top, making kind of a, a waterfall for now. Here's hoping that it all works out, eh? What's going to happen if goblins show up before we have a successful trap, though? <laughs> well, we'll have to work quickly, I think. Back down here, you can see our fortress is all set up, our temporary fortress, absolutely stuffed with cavies. Just a squealing mess. I imagine it's starting to smell, too. You know, actually, I wasn't thinking. I'm going to make all these cavies available as pets, and we'll see if anybody claims them. I'm sure someone will grab a cavy. Get in there, dwarves. Well, looks like we have some migrants already. Wonderful. We'll get you right to work. Okay, now right over here on top of the mountain, we have some windmills a rolling. Enough to get the screw pump working. And yes, having a look, you can see they are going now. We've had our masons up here turning all that stone that was down in that trench into blocks. We'll get a bridge put in here, then we'll get that water a flowing. Try not to get too ahead of ourselves here, but we definitely are. If you have a look here, you can see a wall that now surrounds our little fortress. And this is going to be used to contain that water. It's going to have to be pretty tall, though. We want a massive reservoir. And up above, you can see some stairways that are in place. That's going to help us continue it. Going to take some doing. Continuing to advance, over here, we're going to have a future entrance to our new fortress. That will lead down and through this curvy corridor out to this area here, which will be filled with water. And so the entryway into the fortress will be underwater, which we can use as a trap if we get it done in time and aren't slaughtered by goblins. 
Yes, we're gonna have a, some sort of a bridge thing. I still haven't decided what we're going to do exactly, but the bridge will connect up over here, which will be like kind of a, a chamber underwater that will lead down underground to our new fortress. It should be pretty good. Oh, having a look up over here, uh, we have another migrant wave. Actually, we've had a few that I haven't shown you yet. Now we're up to 54 dwarves. Our population is quickly increasing, but that's fine. Because if you have a look over here, you can see our little uh, horrible muddy nook that we all live in is coming right along. And everyone seems to be pretty much fine with it. Despite us being halfway through our second year at this point. Yes, time is speeding right along. Oh, and speaking of our population, you can see our population of cavies is uh, exploding violently cute little bastards. I had set them as available for taking as a pet, but we only have one person going along and uh, taking them, and that'd be Locum over here. He currently has four of them, as well as a wife and a baby born here in the fortress. Yeah, that family's coming right along. <laughs> you can see also he's uh, he's building a little bit of something over here, and uh, that's a wall that we have going up uh, around the windmill thing. Things are progressing really quickly around here. Yeah, we're gonna have this windmill thing be uh, like, like up on a little island, and hopefully we'll get that surrounded by water when this whole thing's done. Starting to have a feeling this might take two episodes. <laughs> Probably, it's it's quite likely. Well, it looks like we have our first taste of the goblins here, which is a disgusting thought. There's a snatcher moving in with a troglodyte leather bag looking to steal a child. Oh my God. Um, not good. Um, uh, mm, not too sure if they got someone. Gonna, gonna hope not. <laughs> kind of a kerfuffle in there. The goblin appeared to just go into our uh, little dirty fortress and uh, mess around a bit. But having a look down here, um. I think we're good. That was a close call, but we're good. Baby's intact. Wonderful. Oh, hey now. We do have an artifact here. It's probably not going to play a big part, but it looks to be a good one. So let's have a look. Kogan, our weaponsmith, has created Okirtat, a Billin Warhammer. This is a Billin Warhammer, which, if you don't know, is an alloy of copper and silver, and it's encrusted with oval bauxite cabochons studded with Billin and decorated with cow bone and encircled with bands of emerald cut rubies. It also menaces with spikes of ruby. That's a good one right there. Oh, and its name translates to Elder's Touch. <laughs> oh, I like that a lot. We'll have to make sure that gets into the hands of our hammerer. That'd be appropriate, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> Disaster. Okay, um, a little bit of a architectural accident up here. We've caused a section of wall to collapse, which isn't a big, big deal, but it's collapsing like right on top of all our cavities. That's going to be a problem. Um, okay, let's see how this plays out. Okay, well, it wasn't too, too bad, I don't think. A couple of wounded cavies, though. Yeah, but that's fine. We got plenty more cavies. In other news, we've gotten a whole bunch of rangers here in the fortress, and they wanted a guild hall. But we don't really have any room for it, so we just kind of, like, carved out this dirt hole down here. And in order to increase the quality, we stuffed it full of statues and a wooden casket. Gets the job done. A crappy guild hall overall. I don't know how they do anything in there, but they seem to like it. Also, it's called the Scaly Owl. Thought that was interesting. Okay, things are trucking right along, and if you have a look up here in our dirty, tiny fortress, uh, you can see there's a few less dwarves in here than there were before, and that's because we're in the process of moving things downstairs. We have a fortress carved out now. Though that being said, I set up a trap here just in case goblins do show up, which I kind of feel like they might soon. And if you look down underground, we actually have a tunnel, all right, this big zigzag tunnel, and that's going to lead out to the field out front. Now, hopefully goblins will take their time getting through this tunnel here, and once they're all in here, we could dump some water in from right over here. We have a little reservoir dug out, a temporary thing. And so now, assuming everything is set up correctly, we should just be able to come over here and carve away a couple of these little uh, these channels, let some water in, and it should start flowing. Yeah, okay, there we go. Be careful, dwarves, please. It should be perfectly safe, though, I'm thinking. <laughs> but I have been wrong in the past. Be careful, dwarves, please. Excellent, and yes, here comes that water, heading down towards the pump stack. And it should be getting sucked up as we speak, actually. Up to here. And you can see we've actually built a little wall around the uh, the waterfall entrance here, trying to funnel some water down to that second reservoir, which should be filling up in just a moment. And yes, there we go. And once it's full and we get some goblins in there, we can just open up this bridge down here at the end. And this whole thing will just fill straight up with water. And we can just kind of lock the hatch doors and forget about the goblins. It's just a temporary trap, just in case. Hopefully we won't even need the thing. There's no way to drain it either, so it's kind of like a one-shot use. Just as a side note. It's like they heard me talking about them or something. A vile force of darkness has arrived. Just really hoping I set that thing up right now. All right, let's see what we're working with. Okay. Uh, never mind, I guess. <laughs> kind of spooked me. Kind of spooked me. Oh, but we did just spot a snatcher again. Child snatcher. Is this a siege? That's weird. What do you do when you lose or get out of here? Trying to steal our babies. Did you? Did it grab someone? I think. I think it may have grabbed someone this time. 
Uh, you can go to the goblin and check its inventory and look at its bag specifically. <laughs> oh no! And there is a dwarven child stuffed in the bag. That's not good. Um, oh, this is Locum's kid. That's the guy with all those cavy pets. Well, you're not getting away so easy, partner. I'm gonna lock this door so you can't get out. And I'm gonna make a little ragtag militia. And here we go, following the Snatcher. Okay, Snatcher's running and the dwarves are chasing him. The Snatcher is unarmed. They just have the child bag there. Oh yeah, there you go. Beating the hell out of this goblin. They don't stand a chance. Sure is taking him a while though. Oh my god, let's go dwarves. Just added a couple more dwarves to the squad. This should do it. Okay, there we go. Killed the goblin. <laughs> oh no. It looks like the goblin thief was actually using the child bag to uh, attack my dwarves. I mean, I, I guess it makes sense. That's great. This poor child already back playing games. You're, you're pretty lucky. I'm gonna give you a nickname. We're gonna call you Snatchy. Oh, <laughs> that's a bad name. <laughs> and just for the heck of it, you locum, the child's father, the one with the cavies. We're gonna call you Cavy. Simple, but memorable and perfectly apt. Keep on keeping on you dwarves and keep your eyes out for Snatchers too. Nasty business, those goblins. And now that that's all taken care of, a little fortress update. Okay, well, things have been progressing quickly. I think we're in our third year now. And if we have a look up from here, you can see our fortress entrance and the bridge. It's all done, actually. And if you have a look over to the west there, you can see how it connects up to the surface. When this is done, it'll all be submerged. As you can see, the floor of the main area there is all made of bridges. So that when goblins are walking through, we could just open up the bridges and the whole thing will be filled up with water. It'll be a mess. We got it two Z levels tall, just because, no real reason. And we're gonna zoom out a little bit here and go down to ground level. And you can see the wall surrounding the reservoir. Pretty expansive. And if we move up, you can see it's one, two, three, four, five, six Z levels tall. And we still have a couple more to go. It's getting there, taking a while to do. And just because I know people are gonna ask, Here's how I did it. We could see all those staircases there, up down staircases, just kind of dotted around the perimeter of this reservoir. Now what you do is build the staircases just like this, going up, and then you get to an area like this, and you start building the wall between two staircases, like that right there. So a dwarf can come up each of those staircases and have access to each of those sections. And you just build out from there, section by section. This works fine, but basically every single section of wall you have to put in place by hand. Not optimal, but it is a good way to go about it. And now I suppose we can have a look down inside old Watermaster, which you can see if we go down, down, down to here. Yes, and there she be, Watermaster, our home. Coming together, only have the barest necessities in place right now. Over here, you can see the entry stairs. These lead up to the surface. This rough area here in the middle, this is a drain for the water that's gonna come in from that bridge. And so this here links up to the caverns. Hopefully that could take care of the problem. That is gonna be a lot of water though. Moving up a little bit, you can see the mines and some craft guild halls. We actually crammed all of our craft guild halls together in one chamber. Seems to be getting a job done actually. Over this way here, you can see our general temple for praising all the dwarven gods. There's a bunch of sarcophagi in there as well. In the middle, we have our meeting hall, pretty big. Nice bauxite tables in there. Down to the south, you can see some food and drink storage, below which we have our kitchens and brewers. And then up above, we have our living quarters, which still don't have beds in them, which is horrible. And so all the dwarves are still sleeping on that terrible, dirty place. But we're getting there, we're getting there. They're keeping it together for the most part. Oh, and here we go. Another vile force of darkness has arrived. And this time I can already see the goblins. Yeah, it looks to be a few of them. A little worrisome. We just gotta hope that crappy temporary trap works. All right, dwarves, let's move. Man, you know, I don't feel very good about our chances right now, if I'm being frank. Some of those dwarves have a long way to go, but at least they won't all die, I don't think. Whoa, that's a lot of goblins, and they got some, they got trolls too, great. Okay, all right, well, they're heading up the mountainside right now. It's not gonna take them long to get to that burrow. That's for damn sure. Oh yeah, some of these guys are hauling boulders. I've already forbid the boulders, but they're not dropping them. It's a pain in the ass. Gonna be forfeit, I think. As for those goblins, yeah, here they come down the mountainside. There's no way those masons are gonna survive. These goblins are too fast. Maybe a couple of those masons can make it, if they hurry their asses up. All right, yeah, we got a couple of masons in here, but we're gonna run into trouble because there are trolls and they can knock this door straight down. Oh, looking out here, one of our poor masons running around. Oh yeah, they're a goner. Damn shame. Back to the burrow, we have secured this door here with a wooden wall. Those goblins won't be getting in through the front door now. Trolls either. We're safe. And looking down underground, well, we could see one goblin on their way down already. 
two, three, four. Okay, yeah, they're heading down. We're gonna have to wait for them to get down to the very end of this tunnel, then lock up the hatch and pull that lever very quickly. That should do the trick. We just have to kill off enough of them where the rest will scatter. Gotta put the fear of water in their slimy green souls. Yeah, come on down, you bastard. Let's go, hurry up. We don't have any food or drinks inside this burrow right now, so it's only a matter of time before dwarves start starving. Hey, big brain, where are you going? <laughs> Not smart. I don't know why you're going out there, stupid. Okay, yeah, don't, don't do that anymore, you stupid dwarf. Slowed him down, so that's good. We'll just give him a few more seconds here. Gotta lock this hatch. Okay, let's see how this goes. Lever is pulled. Hatch is locked. And... Oh, that is some slow water right there. Oh, no, there it goes. What the hell was that? <laughs> it kind of trickled in for a second, then it just kind of slammed down for another second. That's weird. It should have just filled up this entire coil immediately. Not too sure what the deal with that is, but at least it's kind of getting the job done. The goblins are figuring out what's going on, and uh, yeah, they're, they're dying swiftly. The last few are trying to run out of the tunnel now, but eh, it's not working so well for them. I was hoping we'd get more, but eh, I guess we won't. Might be good enough. Let's see. Oh, man. Okay. I don't think that worked. There are still a lot of invaders left. Damn it. I don't often do the big swears in my videos, but... <laughs> oh, sometimes I really, really think about it. Isn't that fun? Those trolls, I was wondering where they went. They didn't knock down that door because they were too busy up here with our windmills. They destroyed all of them and are now down here, wrecking our entire pump stack. Oh, that thing's a pain in the ass to make, too. I almost, I almost walled up this island, too, but I was like, you know what? It'll be fine. This is their first siege. Actually, this is a... This is a damn big siege for their first siege. <sighs> okay. It's always got to be a damn thing, right? Can't just be easy. <laughs> okay, so you can see the dwarves are not doing too good up here. They're going to start dying shortly, which is something I'd dearly like to avoid. So we are digging down currently. Shouldn't take too long. Hoping it doesn't take too long. <laughs> Man, we can't let this fortress die. We've put a lot of time and effort into that wall outside. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Two seconds. Okay, there we go. Access to new fortress. And now all we should have to do is come down here and build a wall real quick. And you dwarves are going to have to move your asses, like, quickly, too. Come on. Let's get to it. Okay, all right. We're, uh, we're trekking along. Still got one little piece of wall to put in place, though. Please hurry up, someone. Let's go. Let's get it in place. Oh, my God, please. Guys, we've got, like, no time left. So if we could hurry up faster, that would be just, just, just excellent. Come on. Come on. One more. Okay. Okay, there we go. We do have a wall in place. Now, maybe not the best solution. Just kind of watching for a second. Um, if you have a look up just a little bit here, you can see the goblins can climb over that wall. So let's just hope they don't. Pretty much. If you're now dwarves, you can come in here and get yourselves a bite to eat, maybe a little drink too so we don't die. There we go. Nice and safe. But well, it's only going to be a temporary measure, unfortunately. We still have some things we have to do if we're going to be safe in here for now. It's going to take a while for those goblins to leave, I'm thinking. And right now, we don't have any access to food. Just what we have in our fortress. So what I'm thinking we could do is uh, turn this hallway here into a, a temporary farm area. Just going to get it walled up, put a little stairway in the middle there, and then start digging our way up to the aquifer. There is a light aquifer in the area. Yeah, we're just going to come up here and carve away this nice big area using some ramps so we could hit both levels of this aquifer. And I imagine that should do the trick absolutely fine. Certainly seems to be anyways. Yeah, we'll just get this area here nice and wet. And because we have access to the caverns, moss and stuff will start to grow. Which means then our cabbies can eat. A main priority. <laughs> Can't let them go dying. And they are starting to get very hungry. Farms too, I suppose. We could start growing plants. And so, yes. It looks like we were able to survive. By the skin of our teeth, too. Just barely made it. But at this point, I could say we're doing fine. And we're definitely going to get through this. And this is also going to take at least another episode. And so now, as we enjoy some fortress scenes, I'm just going to explain some stuff from behind the scenes. I do like to do these little bits at the end of the episode. And usually I'd show off fan art, but nobody knew this episode was coming, so I'm not going to have any fan art for it. So yeah, we're just going to be looking at some random scenes in the fortress. 
Now, the first thing you're going to notice about this episode is that it was a bit shorter than usual. And I had posted a few places that I'm going to start toning down my videos a little bit. As I'm sure more than a few of you are aware, at this point, they take a long, long time to do. An extremely long time and unhealthy amount of time. And so I'm trying to limit myself and uh, manage a normal work schedule so I can continue doing these videos far into the future. I've been pretty irresponsible with how much I work. And so, yeah, I have to do something and... Well, I'm really hoping this ends up working. And you know what? I'm sure it's going to work fine, too. You guys have always had my back, and I really appreciate that so much. Way more than you know, even. Now, this fortress here, for how short this episode was, I mean, really, the body of it was about 20 minutes long. The fortress took about, I'm going to say, at least 10 hours to get to the point where it is right now. 10, maybe 12 hours even of just straight up gameplay. And it's not even done yet. Although, you know, it's getting there. Yeah, it takes a bit. As I said, the way I'm making that wall outside, it's a, uh, well, it's, it's uh, tedious to say the very least. Got to put every single block in place by hand, but it gets the job done. There's other ways you could do it, like you could build scaffolding out the, uh, like the sides, but, um, you know, that requires a lot of wood. Or, I mean, you could do, you can uh, use other stuff too, of course. But then you have scaffolding all over the damn thing. It's kind of unsightly and you can remove it, but that's a big process too. So, I figured we'd just do it this way. Barring any catastrophic events, we should have the reservoir full by the end of next episode. Really hoping you like the music used in this episode. It was all made by Ivan Dutch, whose music I've used in the past for other projects. The guy is extremely skilled, and I would highly advise checking out his website. I'm going to put a link to that in the description below. If you create fantasy content, there's a library of fantasy-based music, and it's all royalty-free. So snag away. You can tip the guy, and I would highly suggest that. He deserves it, especially if you're using his music, for sure. And how about that intro animation? That was pretty cool, right? I didn't make that one. Normally, I make those. And this is the first time I hired out help on that. It was done by dur 2 Doug on Fiverr. Again, I'm going to have a link to that down in the description. I'd go check him out. His prices are extremely reasonable for the amount of work he puts in. And you can tell the guy is skilled just from looking at that. So again, go check him out. Looking forward to working with Ivan Dutch and Dur2 Doug in the future. Oh, and you know what? We were just looking at some random fortress scenes just now, and time has been dragging on a little bit, but we can see now the goblins appear to be leaving. Excellent. Spring has arrived, and it looks like they've had enough waiting outside. Very good. Yes, the siege is broken, and next time we see Watermaster, we can get back to work proper. <laughs> Although it looks like some of the trolls are still uh, enjoying themselves here at our fortress. That might be a problem. Well, we'll see what happens. Anyways, yes, I thank you for watching today, and I do hope to see you again next time here in Errol Kun, Watermaster. And until then, you bearded bastards. Ooh, also, make sure to put your feedback in the comments below. I'd greatly appreciate that. I want to know what you guys thought. And until next time, you bearded bastards. Ooh.